As you can see, the VW Grand California 600 is parked outside the living room window today. And that can only mean one thing. I'm making a video explaining what modifications I've made to the outside and the inside of the camper van. Now you may have noticed as well, I've got this thing on my chest. This is the new DJI wireless microphone and I bought them the other day and hopefully they'll help with the audio levels a little bit. Cause I have had a few comments, people saying the levels are a little bit off and I am trying. This is relatively new to me, the audio side. So hopefully this makes a difference, but there's also another change that's being made and I'm not sure if you can notice just yet. So interestingly enough, when I was looking through some of the old footage to try and sort of find some B-roll and other bits for this video that I'm making now, I found a video from the 6th of April 2020, which was before I actually took delivery of the Grand California. And in this video, I'm essentially photoshopping a stock Grand California photograph, trying to figure out what style I wanted to go for. You've got to remember as well at this time, there was no Grand Californias really about on the roads and there definitely wasn't any modified Grand Californias. So finding parts one was a nightmare and two, just basically there was no inspiration to look at other people's cameras and think, oh, well, I'm going to change this or I might try that. So this was kind of my process, which was get in Photoshop, mess around with it, see how it looks from there and then try and find parts. So we'll start off the tour around the front of the camper van where we've got a big bull bar here. Um, I got that specifically just because I think it looks nice. Then in the grill we've got laser lamps which are ideal. I will be changing them though to be honest because I'm not that keen on them anymore. I think I'm going for some sort of big circular fog lights which I'll attach to the bull bar. And then under that we've got a 30 inch light bar which both of these two, the laser lights and the light bar combined, kick out a massive amount of light. I'll put a little video on now to show you how bright they are. In the camper van, we've got a switch that I like to call the sun switch. So there is valid reasons why I got them that many lights at the front of the camper van. And the first one is when you're up in Scotland, especially in the winter months when it's dark by like four o'clock, the deer will actively try and murder themselves by just standing in the middle of the road. The lights just help you sort of light everything up and be a bit more aware of your surroundings when it's dark and you're in the middle of nowhere. And on top of that, when Jeff decides to pull out on you in his little Toyota Yaris and then just sit at 20 mile an hour on a country road, you can give him a quick little flash, burn out his retinas, Jeff will regret it, and then you can overtake and crack on with the rest of your journey now obviously that's not something i would do personally but i have been told by people that's something that you could do if you had a lot of lights at the front of your car and people pull out on you and all the rest of it so just food for thought really So now we'll move on around the side of the camper van and this is where you'll find one of the worst design choices VW could have made and quite a lazy one as well. So what they've decided to do that no matter what colour camper van you decide to buy, so whether you buy a nice silver one or a dark Indian grey one like this one is, they'll fit it with a nice bright silver fuel step on the side which is a massive vice or regardless of what colour you pick. So one of the first things that we've done when I got it and I started looking at things to do was I wanted a shot of that. Turns out they do make black ones, which isn't what we've done. We just wrapped the one that was already on there. But VW, why not just fit dark camper vans with a dark step? Or just fit them all with a dark step? So I will play some footage now of the first day I took delivery and I took it up the Galloway Forest and stayed overnight up that way. And you can see the step even in the drone footage, it just stuck out like a sore thumb. So I had to get that fixed. And well, like I say, we ended up wrapping it. So we move along from the step, I did decide that I wanted to wrap from this sort of panel line down over all the way around the camper van in like a plastic 3M wrap and the main reason for that was again mainly because I thought it looked nice and secondly the wheels and tyres that I have got on do poke out very slightly, the mud guards do absolutely nothing and the side of the camper van just gets absolutely peppered with mud dust and just dirt in general. Having this on the bottom half just makes things a little bit easy. You can give it a quick wipe over and there's no issues. And then obviously if you fly drones into them as well, which I would never do, but if I did, ideally I would have flown it lower down into the wrap and not just straight into the door. And now for the wheels and tires. And I went for a 17 inch Delta 4B4 Classic, which is what these wheels are called with obviously the um, BF Goodrich all-terrain tyres and to be fair yes you do lose a little bit of mile to the gallon and they do make a little bit more noise than the standard van tyres but ultimately for me they're the best tyres I've had 
and they just come in so useful all the time. Just even a bit of wet grass can be an issue when you've got normal low resistance van tyres on. So these come in handy for that and let you see, I had them on the last camper van so I'm not really affected by the noise or the loss of the miles to gallon because I'm used to it now and to me it's well worth the trade off. There is however an issue with the front one where here and here it started to come off the paint on these sort of rim protector bits and I did change all of these bolts from silver to black because I just thought they looked awful how they were before. Not a fan of the wheels anymore to be fair, these probably will be changing but for the now this is what I've got. We've got these indicators wrapped as well, just smoked a little bit, just so they're not as much of a nice as they were. So if we move around to the back of the camper van, I'll start off with this door first. So I went and put a spare wheel holder on the door, and then I've got obviously a full size spare wheel that matches all the rest of the wheels on the camper van, just in case obviously we get a puncture. You don't want to be left with a little space savory type wheel or just a, a wheel that doesn't match everything else, especially if you've got a bit of a road trip still to do. On this door, I went for a ladder, and again, the main reason I went for the ladder was, well, primarily and exclusively because it looks nice. The roof on the Grand Californias isn't actually load bearing so I can't put anything up there. So yeah, the ladder was just for sure. I did get grip tape installed on the ladder as well because I thought it would just again look better. And it turns out grip tape is the most effective way at removing any layers of skin you've got on any surface that just slightly brushes against it. So I do regret putting that on there and I have lost a lot of skin to it but ultimately I made that decision. I've got to live with it. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have made another change to things and that is what I'm shooting this video on. So I've been using a Nikon Z7 Mark II for the last eight months or so and I've been with Nikon since I started taking photographs about eight years ago. And two days ago, I decided to get this. I think it's the right way around and that is the Sony A7S Mark III. And I've switched all of my Nikon stuff, replaced it all with Sony stuff. Although currently I've only got two lenses because the others are on pre-order. I'm liking it so far. Let us know in the comments if you think you've noticed any sort of difference, whether it's better or worse quality than what my previous videos were. And I'm sure you'll let us know if you think I've wasted my money. So hopefully it will improve the video quality on the channel, which ultimately is, well, what I'm after really. So moving on now to the interior of the camper van and the changes we made in here. I did attempt to make this part of the video yesterday, but the temperature inside the camper van yesterday was 38 and a half degrees. The sun has been mental. It's been beautiful actually. Today it's a cool 26.4 degrees. So it's a little bit more manageable. So let's move on to the front where the driver and passenger sit. So I've made a few changes at the front, not a lot really, but I bought the rubber footwell mats because, well you have to, especially when you're off out hiking all the time and everything just gets caked in mud and these are just dead easy to clean, much easier than carpet. Um, you may notice this as well, this is new, I only bought this the other day and this is so I can mount my cameras so when we're driving I can get a video of the road or I can get a sort of facing towards me and I can talk to the camera without having to hold anything and without needing Danny there to sort of be on guard all the time and I'm like quick record this, quick record that, you can relax a little bit more when we're driving and obviously over there you'll see Danny's input to the camper van and what she's decided is that we essentially need a fake plant in a glass jar that rattles around the cup holder the whole time you're driving so that's Danny's little input and what I have got everywhere else is I've got a sort of non-slip rubber stuff just literally everywhere on here just so if I put anything anywhere it doesn't slide around rattling is my most hated noise to be honest behind the driver and passenger seat we went and changed a few things now you may or may not have seen depending on what videos you've watched that VW essentially expect you to erect a tent in the front windscreen every time you want to go to bed and then I bought a cover where you climb out and you just essentially just it goes over the top of the windscreen and tucks in the doors that worked well but then sometimes the weather's a bit crap and you don't want to get outside so what I have done is I've removed a handle that was on the bed which again if you haven't seen any videos I don't use the bed up here so it's redundant so I removed the handle off it and I fitted a curtain pole on that curtain pole obviously we've put some blackout blinds they are kept in place by these little magnetic tie backs and then essentially you slide that along on both sides and well and it's dark in it 
So that's the solution I came up with. Makes life so much easier. Above the driver's compartment where the bed was, I've got two different storage boxes, which luckily without any sort of measuring fit, literally perfect side by side. So the one on the right hand side has got all the cleaning gear in. This one's got pots, pans, and just loads of stuff that makes a ton of noise. Now just behind where the driver and passenger sit is the bench seat area. This is where the passengers sit. Um, above here, we've got a kitchen roll holder, which is dead handy. Obviously the kitchen is on the other side and you can just turn around, pull some of this off and then mop up whatever crap you've slopped everywhere. But some more fake plants here that Danny decided we need, as well as a few other very realistic looking cacti that you bought from, I think Sainsbury's for about eight quid. You can't tell because the quality is so high. Then under that, we've went for the spice rack, which you may or may not have seen. Again, something that I've done on previous video, which I think looks quite cool and serves a purpose because we do use a lot of these spices while we're cooking. What has become an issue though, is whenever we start driving, one of these inevitably move and then everything becomes a little bit more loose, in which case you're driving along with this in the background. and it does me not in, but these will be here to stay for the time being. I don't know what else to do other than potentially buy maybe plastic bottles for the spices. I'm not 100% sure, but these are there and it is what it is. Around the corner slightly from that, we've got a couple of photographs we've, which we've put on. They've fared quite well to be fair in the maybe three weeks or so that we've had them on there. They must've only fell off about, I don't know, 18, 19 times. So not too, too bad. So if we move slightly further back, just opposite where the kitchen is, I went and fitted some of these, which are, I think they were eight or eight by eight or 10 by 10 inch sort of mirror stick on panels. They just got four adhesive pads on each corner and to be fair, they work really well. The only issue with these is if you do wipe them with anything and try and clean them, they just scratch. So they will need replacing at some point, but it just comes in handy if I'm in the shower. The only other mirror you've got really is in the bathroom. So if I'm in the shower and Danny wants to start getting ready, she can. And they were about, I don't know, 15 quid off Amazon for a pack of four. So I put all four of them there in the work really well. If you haven't seen sort of one of the interior updates videos that I made, um, you'll not have seen the carpentry that went into creating these wooden cupboard doors. And obviously they're definitely not sort of vinyl stickers or anything either, which makes it sort of custom and bespoke and rustic feeling. So I've got them down here as well as in the back of the camper van as well. And to be fair, I think they just break the white sort of MRI scanner look of the VW Grand California up a little bit because it is a little bit bland in here before you start changing anything. So the Grand California by default comes with this sort of wooden floor as far as I'm aware. I don't know, it might come with others, but mine did. So I went and bought this, which is a brand up um, carpet, essentially. It comes in three different sections, this area, the hallway, then the garage, so you can buy each one if you want, or just all of them, like I did. And to be honest, they're fantastic. They've got adhesive stuff on the back, which I don't use, but it's also got like a sticky, rubbery stuff on the back, which stops it from sliding around. The only issue with them is obviously then you need to hoover and me being in and out of this all day, has trailed a lot of crap in, so now they're minging, so they're now hoovering. So that's it. That is the tour of the VW Grand California 600. Like I say, my VW Grand California 600. And before we end the video, I did want to go over because a lot of people have asked kind of essentially how much it costs and all the rest of it. And I've answered a few people, but I didn't actually know exactly how much it cost myself until I went back through the order form because it was a while ago. This is the VW Grand California 600, as you know, which is the medium wheelbase van. It's got the big brow on the front and the 680 is the longer one, which where you sleep sort of lengthways instead of widthways and it's got a bit more space. This is the smaller one of the two. So it's 177 PS, eight speed automatic. It's in Indian gray and it's registered at 3.88 ton because of the um, bed and the roof and the tow bar and all the rest of it. So the options on this camper van is it's got a solar panel on the roof, obviously the paint, the rain sensor, a light and vision pack, discover media pack, front and rear parking sensors with side protect, rear view camera, heated washing nozzles, trailer hitch, heated mirrors, step illumination, heated seats, and then obviously the bed above the driver's compartment as well. But all in it ended up costing me £81,355, and that isn't cheap by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm 
totally understand that so many people will probably mention in the comments that I could have had this with that amount of money, I could have done that with that amount of money, I could have bought something else with that amount of money, and yes, I could have, but I didn't, I bought this. I'm obviously interested to see what you would have done with that amount of money, so pop that in the comments below. If you were spending that much on a camper van, what would you buy? Now on top of that, obviously I modified it as well, and I've spent probably in the region of six to seven thousand pounds roughly modifying it for the wheels, tires, all of the other stuff that's on there as well. Again, that's just a ballpark figure. I'm not actually 100% sure how much I have spent on the camper van. And I know it may look like on previous videos and all the rest of it that I dislike the camper van or that I sort of regret buying it. And to be honest, I don't really regret buying it. I regret that I've had some of the issues that I've had with it and I wouldn't have expected them but I've had them. I love the camper van and for me, it's the best looking camper van you can buy. Um, sort of factory stuff, I don't like any of the Fiat stuff. I, I just think all Fiat's, Peugeots and Fords are just ugly and that's just my opinion. This, even with the brow, to be fair, I hated that at the beginning, but I kind of like it. I think standard, they don't look nice, but obviously I like the look of mine because, well, I made it look like this. This is it, this is me baby and as much as she's a pain in the ass sometimes, I, I love her, so yeah. I don't think I've missed anything else. But I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any other questions that I haven't answered about the camper van, pop them in the comments below. But other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.